right, so I had a subscriber send me a message, or post a comment, pardon me, asking me to make a video on the question, what is religion? Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really rich question, right? He said something like, you know, I've heard people say that, pardon my chain smoking, by the way, I've heard people say that, um, you know, atheism is re religion. I've heard people say that communism is a re religion. You know, this word seems to be, I don't know, maybe strained, right? Bursting out of the seams with potential meanings. Um, they're not wrong, right? He's not, he's not wrong to, uh, to, to point that out. It seems like, um, it seems like, uh, the word kind of becomes meaningless after a while. It seems to just become a slur. Right. So how do, how would we, um, how would we begin to, to go about to think about what, what religion is, right? Um, and there are two ways that, that I think a linguist would go about this, and I'm not a linguist, but, um, from my understanding of, of linguistics, um, there are a few things to recognize. Technically speaking, um, from the perspective of linguistics, words don't have definitions, right? They have uses. Um, they have, uh, there's, there's a pragmatic component to, to language, right? So within a certain context, I might use the word religion. I mean, within a certain context, somebody might say that communism is a religion. And by that, I think, it it really is just an insult, I think. Um, you know, I think that saying communism is a religion is is a quali has a different character than saying something like um, Marxism um, has uh, sort of Christian elements in it, which I think is a case you can make, right? You know, but that, there, there's something very different about saying that Marxism has Christian elements um, and pointing to what those are, right, in sort of a scholarly way and just kind of talking about them, as opposed to saying communism is a religion, right? The implication being communism is something that people irrationally die for, right? So in this, in this sense, um, you know, it's an instrument of bondage, right? And I think this kind of usage of the term probably appeared uh, with, with the Enlightenment. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a newer use of the term. So immediately once I say that, right, we begin to see one side of the linguistic coin, which is the fact that words have histories. Um, words have, uh, etymologies. They come from somewhere, right? Now, relig the word religion, um, I know it's a matter of some debate, but the source the word that I've seen uh, the word religion connected to most often um, is religare, um, which means uh, to, to bind, right, or, or that which binds fast. Um, and the idea behind that is that is that religion is something that that binds communities together, right? Um, so in in the ancient world, um, uh, it you wouldn't be able to parse out uh, like they would look at these questions very differently, right? In in the ancient world, um, you know, there's a there's a question: did, did the Greeks believe in their gods, right? And, you know, they weren't stupid, right? You know, if, if they went to the top of Mount Olympus, you know, I think we can say that they, they probably know that there weren't gods up there, right? But to identify as a Greek person meant to uh, participate, meant at some level to, to participate uh, in, in um, sacrificing a cock to Asclepia, to use Socrates dying words um it's 
that that's a part of of how somebody would identify right we are greek this is part of what it means to be greek right um and it wasn't so much a metaphysical proposition in the way that we would think of metaphysical propositions right religion in, in the ancient greek sense it it's it wasn't it, it wasn't about you know the actual existence of of thor and zeus and, and all of this and sometimes i hear new atheist sort of arguments um you know what's the difference between yahweh and zeus or something like that well i mean yahweh is put forward a little bit more seriously <laughs> as a as a metaphysical proposition um that's one difference um so we we would use you know the Greeks would define themselves in in relation to their myths uh, just to de describe how this would work for a second. The Greeks would define themselves in relation to their myths um they would uh, create heroes often you know born of the gods you know you all know what it looks like you know big muscular men pointing and wreaths and I don't know stuff like that um and the idea behind myths um myth isn't myth isn't you know there, there's this um I, I had a conversation with matthew 419 once where he said you know the most insulting thing is when people say that christianity is a myth right but what a myth is in in ancient times is a way to sort of enshrine cultural values and communicate them um you know, we we look at someone like Achilles, uh, and we say this guy's a good guy, right? <laughs> um, you should be like Achilles. Um, it wasn't really tied to to the concept of Achilles' existence, right? It was it was more of a a way of talking about value structures than it was a way of thinking about uh, facts of the world. Um, some might have taken it that way, but but this this function of how of of expressing and communicating values is is I think really the primary thing that's that's going on in, in Greek myths. Some might take issue with that. If you do, please you know leave a comment. I'm open to learn about this. Right. Um. Uh, so so in, in some sense the gods play a moral function. Right, rather than an explanatory function, and this is why uh, you know religion is that which binds fast. Right, this is why religare is, means that that which binds. Right, to be Greek means to participate in these rituals, which is an affirmation, a symbolic affirmation of uh, unified value structures. Right, Grecian value structures. Um. So it's more tied to, to national identity than anything else. Um, so that's that's one that's one etymology. That's the etymology that I've seen most often. The other one uh, I can't I can't remember the word, but with some foresight I pulled up uh, Wikipedia. Um, so the etymology of the word religion. I hate doing this in fucking videos because you can just do this yourself, right? Um, uh the other etymology is um uh it is derived from the latin religio I, I don't know how to pronounce these words so i apologize the ultimate origins of which are obscure one possibility is an interpretation traced to cicero connecting lego which means read um and re again right so re lego right uh, to to go over again, right? It, the, this is one of the possible translations. Um, to go over again or to consider carefully, right? Um, so this is another possible etymology of of the word religion. It's, it's the practice of going over things again, right? Uh, to to carefully consider things. Um, uh, now I find the former. Uh, more persuasive. It makes more sense to me, right? Um, but there's no doubt that in the ancient world, uh, the 
the priestly class were the intellectuals. So it, it makes sense in, the, in that sense. Um, or at least they were one class of intellectuals. Um, so the, those are two sort of origins, potential origins of, of the word religion. And, and it's always something to keep in mind, the idea of that which binds fast, right? Um, I had, I remember talking to Youssef, uh, and he said, he's, I've heard him say more than once, um, things like, um, you know, it's, it's a, to, to paraphrase his point, maybe fairly, maybe unfairly, um, it, you know, it's not a, it's not so much about the proposition that God exists, right? Um, you know, in quotes, my orthodoxy is part of my identity to participate in in uh in these sort of ritual structures is is a part of my identity and that's more of what it's about Theo warner says something similar it's more about participation religion is not something that you believe it's something that you do right um and you do it communally right uh i'm adding something to theo to theo's words there so I hope I'm not misrepresenting it. Um, but religion is something something that you do. It's something that you practice in a community. Right? And it seems like that aspect of religion um, is the, the, the heart, if you like, of, um, of, of where religion comes from. Right? It comes from a sort of... Um, affirmation and, and longing for community. Any metaphysical claims are, are secondary, and you can challenge whether or not those kinds of community structures are good things or bad things, and whatever, it doesn't matter, right? I'm just trying to give an explication of the history of, of the word. Um, it's really, um, someone pointed out to me, Thomas Aquinas, I'm, I'm a little skeptical, right? I, um, at a certain point in religious history, um, people got very interested in the question of, well, does God exist, right? Um, because St. Paul se seems to say uh, that, you know, if the resurrection never happened, all this is for nothing. Um, so he, he seems to be framing that in an empirical way. Uh, I... I have my doubts that that's what he actually said. It, it's, it doesn't seem Pauline to say that. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Any of you people who know know the Bible um, well and know the Greek would, would probably be able to inform all of us. Um, I have my doubts that he'd say that, but in, as the West kind of grows and, and into the Middle Ages, you begin to see... Uh, a diminution of the communal aspects from the metaphysical aspects, where you begin to see a, a, a separation. Right. Um, in the early medieval world, I don't think it would even make sense to say that I'm I'm not I am not a Catholic, right? Unless you were like uh, an Arab or, or or an Asian person or something like that. Right. Um, if you were a European in the early medieval medi in the early Middle Ages, I'm not sure that it would make sense to say that I'm not a Catholic. Um, uh, so there is still this 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 aspect of of community. Um, and you find it you find a, a wide spectrum here, right? You find people who talk about religion as community. Barack Obama is someone who talks about religion as community very intensely in his writings um he doesn't it doesn't have anything it doesn't seem to have anything to do with uh with affirming the metaf metaphysical proposition of the existence of god it has to do with um affirming that there's a value in these structures of community right um you can you can find this in other places uh in other countries in the world uh lots of pastors just don't believe in god right and they still do their thing um and there's no contradiction right um for some reason we in america 
and it's probably true in Britain also. Um, maybe less true in Britain, I don't know. But for some reason, we in America seem to be very caught up with the question of the actual ontological existence of God. That seems to have taken up our focus, particularly in the YouTube atheist community, for obvious reasons. Um, I think a lot of that also has to do with our Anglo-American heritage um, and the systems of philosophy that have been generated out of that. Um, we tend to look at things in this hyper-propositional way. Right. Um, but if you regard religion as something that you do, right, rather than something that you believe, then um, it's it's not propositional, right? Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's ex becomes expressive, it becomes um, performative, right? Um, it's not like you know X exists, right? And we provide evidence for that claim. It's just not it's not that kind of a statement. Um, it belongs closer to music, right? <laughs> you might say than it does to um, science. Um, so what I'm trying to get at here, what I'm, what I'm trying to hash out, is that is that there are different ways of looking at the concept of religion, and I think there have been there's been this spectrum has existed throughout the history of religious thought, right? Uh, is religion something ontological or is it something social? Um, and again, since we in the atheist community d deal with apologists, their interest is in the ontological side. But if you read serious theologians, right, there's a big movement, particularly in the 60s, called God is Dead Theology, um, which tries to develop this out. Uh, it was really fashionable for a time. There's a movement called Christian Atheism, right? You can imagine the kind of proposition is that no, it, it is it is myth, right? You know, or values are enshrined in in the figure of Christ, and like that's what it means to be a follower of Christ, and blah blah blah. blah. Um, and I don't think that's illegitimate. Um, I think that's a, a a perfectly legitimate way of of thinking about what what religion is. Um, So yeah, that's 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 one way that we can analyze and talk about the question: What is religion? Is is we can look at the history of the thing, right? Because the word works, right? When you say, you know, it has pragmatic usage. When when you say Islam is a religion, right, or the religion of Islam, or whatever you want to say, that statement has meaning to me, right? Like I have all of a sudden narrowed down. The possibility of things that you could be talking about. You say that communism is a religion. I get that too. It means something different, but I get it, right? Um, the so what I want to say is that is that the the question that's being posed, right? Religion seems to have these different sen senses, right? And so, what does it mean? It seems to me that. It, the question implies that there is some essential character, right? There's some set of necessary and sufficient conditions um, that uh, by which we can say X is, is a religion, X is not a religion, right? But and and that's that's how logic works, right? It's it's not it's not a stupid thing to ask for that. Um, I think a lot of people think like this, right? Um, I think this is this is a lot of bionic dances, a lot of where I disagree with bionic dance, right? Is that um, I'm I'm not a linguistic essentialist, right? Um, uh, you know, I understand that there are blurry lines between uh, what a tree is and what a bush is, maybe, right? Um, I understand that there are blurry lines between what a religion might be and what a social club might be. Um, there aren't sharp edges, right? I just don't think it exists. <laughs> um, there is no set criteria. Um, but yeah, so that's tried to go through some of the history of the idea um, and do a rudiment, very rudimentary, very basic. It's a very complex subject, so I'm just trying to cram a lot of stuff in here and, and hopefully. Um, inform a little bit and get some 
some gears turning for some people. Um, but we would call that a diachronic analysis, a very shoddy diachronic analysis, um, a very imprecise diachronic analysis. Uh, it means an analysis over time, right? Learning the history of words. Um, you could also look at it in a synchronic way. So what words tend to appear alongside the word religion, right? What words are implied by the word religion? Uh, I've gone over this in other videos, um, maybe even about this specific subject, but uh, the idea of a synchronic analysis is that the word marriage has related to it all these other words like husband and wife and ceremony and reception, right? Uh, ring, right? Um, ring bearer, maid of honor, right? All these sort of phrases, right? Um, and the word marriage, at least in part, gets its meaning um, by the interrelation of all those implied words when you say the word marriage. And I think you could do this with religion. You could begin to think about this, right? And you could say that um, when you say communism is a religion and Christianity is a religion, the, the synchronic structure there is different. Um, uh, so when I say Chris, when I say religion, right, um, particularly in a Western context, and you know, I rationalize that word in terms of Christianity. It was raised that way, I'm surrounded by Christian people. Um, so it's just the default mode of dealing with that word. Um, but I would associate it with, uh, you know, the crucifix and. Christ and the idea of resurrection and the idea of you know all these words right mass um, holy days of obligation that was Catholic right uh, uh, priests and and I don't know like all of those things come with or sort of implied with the word religion right so I can I can sort of define or I can sort of sketch out you can do this much 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 more precisely and interestingly by the way. But just to show you one way that another way that you can think about it, um, the interrelation between all those different things around, you know, sort of converging around this word religion is one way that the word seems to get its meaning. If you say that communism is a religion, well, that means that means something different, right? The symbols that I associate with it are different. Uh, I would associate that with words like fanaticism, right? Maybe cult would be a word. Um, you know, irrational devotion uh, to a person, right? Um, uh, the, the symbols that are more closely related to the word religion have changed in, the, in a context where you say communism is a religion versus when you say Christianity is a religion. Um... And if you say atheism is a religion, the, it's a different synchronic structure still, right? Um, and it, remember, some, anybody who says that, that atheism is a religion is likely going to be a fundamentalist Christian. So we have to think about how they use the term. We have to think about the, the symbols that are associated with this word, right? Um, and the word religion here... Um, is likely means something more like false religion, uh, heresy, even. Um, uh, but it's also tied to the word hypocrisy, right? Atheism, atheists claim to not be religious, and yet, for some, you know, yet they are are still religious, right? Like that seems to be the claim that's implicit in it. Um, don't tell me to not be religious when you're religious, right? And I think that would very likely be tied to uh, a, a claim about dogmatism uh, it, it, implicitly right there there are atheist dogmas would be the claim there uh, um, um, so basically when I feel like when particularly when a fundamentalist says that atheism is a religion what what they're saying is it, it's, it's an act of projection right um, to use this <laughs> Psychology 101 language. 
um, it's almost like they're taking everything that they feel like they're shat on for being religious, right? Being dogmatic, being potentially irrational, being being whatever, and just pushing that onto onto the atheist and saying you're all of those things too. So, in that sense, there are all these uh, there are all these it it's all these components of that structure of religion. Um, that sort of our Western intellectual tradition have regarded to be negative, right? or in this in this context, I mean a bad thing, right? Um, uh, it's taking all those things that that they hear all the time as being as being bad and sort of pushing it onto onto the atheists, um, and it's it's a way I think of kind of absolving uh, themselves of those kinds of charges. Um, it's a two, there's a kind of two quote fallacy in there, right? Um, but it, it, I imagine it's it's psychologically effective. That's the best explanation that I can find for, or that I could pull out of my ass, I guess, for uh for the statement, uh, atheism is a religion. Um, but I think you can see that like the character of the word religion changes depending on the depending on its context of usage. Um, it's associated... Um, it's associated... All, all the things that we associate with it, right? The context that gives it meaning, in other words, uh, shift when it's used in this way versus when it's used in this way. And religion is an interesting example just because it happens to be a very complex word, and it's very easy to point out those sorts of shifts. Um, but this is true about all language, right? This is how language functions, right? Um, this is, uh, you know, language is, is very not solid ground, right? A lot of people usually, if people want to, uh, really firmly define a term and claim that you have to use it that way or you, you're using it incoherently, um, or something like that, usually they're going to appeal to a dictionary. Um, then you need to ask the question that you know is that is that an authority on, on how language functions, right? Or is that something that we use to conveniently uh, create a reference point, right? Um, because this seems to be how we learn language, and language acquisition is a very complex subject as well, and a very interesting subject. Uh, and if anybody knows more about language ex acquisition than I do, please speak up, because I, I could be wrong. But in, in my experience, it seems to be that, like, it's not that, we get a, it's not that we get a definition of a term, and then we just use strictly that definition, right? That's not, that doesn't seem to be how real language works. Um, the way real language, or natural language, we might say, seems to work is uh, natural language acquisition, right? Um, it seems to work is, is, is I encounter a definition and that gives me a starting point and I keep that starting point in my head and as I encounter more and more usages of it, right, it, the word becomes more plastic, right, less essential, right, um, uh, more, more functional, right, um, more context dependent and in that sense more rich, right, this is it. I'd say it's a good thing that language is unstable in, in the way that it is. Um, so yeah, uh, synchronic analysis, diachronic analysis, those would be um, some of the tools that a linguist might apply to the question, what is religion? Um, linguists don't tend to look at words as being essential, right? You know, they, they don't have one definition, right? Um, language usage in the real world is this sort of sloppy evolutionary process with lots of um, blurry lines, right? It's a, a cumulative, always happen. It's it's actually very similar to evolution in a certain way. Um, I don't know what the questioner's background is, um, in intellectual background is, I guess you could say, but um, if you are somebody who's been interested in the quote-unquote new atheism you see discussions about mimetics a lot 
um, and that how mimetics is um, is reasoned through is is probably a starting point, right, to begin to think about how language works. Um, uh, it, there's a real question, and we I, we don't know. I'm not sure if we know the answer to this, right? But um, there's a real question of, you know, is common usage something digital, right? In the way that referencing memetics would imply that it is. Um, uh, I, again, if somebody's a linguist and understands that question, uh, uh, please voice your thoughts I, I want to know I want to know your answer to that question so this is a whole bunch of stuff about language and the word religion and I hope you enjoyed it again uh, I'm not dogmatically backing very much that I've said um, these are just this is just what I know from what I happen to have read it's you know I'm, I'm not a specialist in the subject and it's definitely a subject where you would get a lot out of um, hearing a specialist talk about it. Um, but that's my feeble understanding. So have a good night.